Hi everyone, my name is Cara Hamilton and I will be sharing with you my project on how vaping has an effect on your health. So I will be going over with you what vaping is, how it's different from e-cigarettes and cigarettes, why it's a concern for our health, how it's um, related to COVID-19, some nicotine alternatives, and some resources that people can use. So first, what is a vape? But um, according to Merriam-Webster, vaping means to inhale vapor through the mouth from a usually battery operated electronic device, such as an electronic cigarette that heats up and vaporizes a liquid or a solid. So here I've included some diagrams to show you what's inside a vape to further understand how it works. So vapes usually have a battery that then operates some sort of heating mechanism. It heats up a solution that has nicotine, juice, flavoring, that kind of stuff. And then you inhale the vapor from that juice from the mouthpiece. Here I've included some different photos of how you might see a vape uh, might look like. So the difference between vapes and cigarettes include, um, they do actually have some similarities. So they both have nicotine in them, or they both can have nicotine in them. However, with vapes, you can choose how much nicotine is in them. So you can actually have vapes with just flavoring in them, or you can also go all the way up to vapes can have more nicotine in them than your regular cigarettes do. They both do have chemicals that are toxic to the body. However, cigarettes do have more of those in them than vapes do. <laughs> and uh, with cigarettes, they run on tar um, and tobacco, which is that brown stuff you see inside of them, versus vapes just run on juice and water vapor. And another big difference between vapes and cigarettes is that we don't know as much about vapes because they're newer. We don't have as much research about them versus cigarettes. We do know a good bit about cigarettes because they've been around for a while. We've had lots of research done, so we know how cigarettes can have, a, um, can have an impact on your health. Now, vapes versus e-cigarettes, I've included just a short little timeline here. So uh, in 2003, e-cigarettes E-cigarettes were first invented to replace tobacco smoke, um, and they used lithium ion rechargeable batteries and a nicotine solution from a disposable cartridge. And then in 2007, these were manufactured outside of China. They were reinvented, and they became extremely popular in societies across the world. And then in 2010, a lot of companies started modifying them a little bit, uh, not a little bit, they actually started modifying them a lot differently. And so that's when they were kind of considered a new category of vapes as opposed to e-cigarettes. So that's the main difference. So why is vaping a concern right now? It's a concern because there's been an increase in using them, especially for adolescents, which I've included this graphic from the NIH. On the left-hand side, you see uh, the percentage of 8th, 10th, and 12th graders who've reported using vapes in the last year. And on the right-hand side, it shows you what they're reporting to be in those vapes between nicotine, marijuana, or just flavoring. And I like the statistic they have, which says that nearly two in five students in 12th grade report past year vaping, raising concerns about the impact on brain health and potential for addiction. So that's over a third. 37.3%, uh, that's more than a third of 12th graders. So that, that's why this is a concern because we don't know that much about vaping, as I said. And these adolescents, their bodies are still forming, their brains are still forming. So that's one of the biggest concerns. And another big concern is that vapes have nicotine in them just like cigarettes. And we know the effects that nicotine has on your body, which includes it can actually harden your blood vessels it can increase your heart rate and blood pressure, and it can increase your blood sugar. All of this, it puts a lot of stress on your body. And so all of this increases your risk of a heart attack and other morbidities like other heart diseases that you can develop.
And here's a video by Northwestern. People that are getting suddenly sick with this vaping related lung illness seem to be having sort of a three to four day onset of symptoms of shortness of breath, perhaps cough and kind of like bronchitis type symptoms, and then a variety of other vague complaints like fever and nausea and vomiting or abdominal pain. And based on the reporting that's coming out, it seems to be two to three days of this. And then they just keep sort of going down a slippery slope. They come, they get a chest x-ray, and it shows what looks like a bad pneumonia in the lungs. But all the tests for respiratory infections that have been done in most of these cases have been negative. So it looks like a bad pneumonia, but there's no actual bug that seems to be causing it. And these folks have required lots of oxygen. Some of them have fallen into full-on respiratory failure and needed ventilators. And it's pretty, pretty scary. These folks get what we call supportive care, meaning they get oxygen, ventilatory support. You know, most people would probably give them antibiotics to treat what might be an infection, just in case that we're not picking up on it. Sometimes people have been given anti-inflammatory drugs like steroids. And then it's kind of like across your fingers and hope they get better. And if the symptoms are severe and it's lingering and you're really having a hard time breathing or coughing, catching your breath, nausea, vomiting, anything like that, go to an ER or a more urgent setting. But if it's sort of a vague bronchitis and things aren't going great, I think seeing a doctor getting a chest x-ray makes all the sense in the world. Bring the vaping cartridge with you to the office visit or the ER or wherever you're going and then encourage your doctor to report the illness to the CDC. No one's going to judge you for being a person who has vaped, just like no one would judge you for any other thing that or behavior that you do. You know, we're in the business of helping people get better and then helping people avoid harm in the future. So you better believe if I'm your doctor, I'm going to encourage you to quit vaping and give you strategies to do that, just like I would encourage you to quit smoking cigarettes. But certainly there's no judgment. All right. So that was a great video that Northwestern Medicine created, and I liked how they they tell you about different symptoms, how people may be treated in the hospital, and it's all from a doctor's point of view. And I also like that he included that doctors aren't going to judge you, people in the healthcare, um, wherever facility you go to shouldn't be judging you if you go in because you're experiencing these problems from vaping because they're there to make you better. And we wouldn't want um, someone to not go to the hospital if they're experiencing these symptoms because they're afraid of being judged. So I found this article in the news, this young woman you may have seen, uh, she started a no vaping campaign because she ended up being in the hospital because of her vaping habit. So the story is that um, she had a vaping habit that she hid from her parents. I believe she is about 19 years old. She's less than 20, thinks she's still in high school. And one day she felt like she couldn't breathe. She was with her parents, so they rushed her to the hospital where they took an x-ray of her and turns out she had fluid built up in her lungs from inflammation because of the vape products that she was using. While she was at the hospital, she couldn't breathe on her own for two days, and so they had to put her on a ventilator, which is what you see going in her mouth right now, which basically um, breathes for her, and she actually had to also be put on a medically induced coma for three days. And while she was at the hospital, the cousin told her parents about her vaping habit, which apparently was one nicotine cartridge per day, which is a lot. And so this just goes to show how um, we may not think that this could happen to us, but it can, even to someone who's young and might have a really strong immune system. And um, so I got this from ABC, and they included this quote from the CDC, which says that as of September 10th, there have been six confirmed deaths in over 450 possible cases of lung illness in 33 states associated with e-cigarette products. And that was in September. It is now November. Um, so you can imagine that those numbers may have increased since then. So how does this relate to COVID? Well, because the, basically what you breathe in from your vape product, it actually damages your lung tissue and it causes that inflammation, um, which is exactly what happened with the young female. And so it makes it harder for your body to fight off diseases such as pneumonia. And that's why that woman was in the hospital because she developed pneumonia from her vaping products. 
And so because of this, it actually increases your risk of being infected with COVID five times more. So that's why um, vaping, uh, that's why they're finding some people, some young students who are um, vaping are actually at an increased risk for getting COVID. And um, a lot of times young people who vape tend to share their vapes with their friends. And so that's another mode of transmission for COVID. Here I've listed some FDA approved nicotine alternatives, which are all over the counter, except for the inhalers and the nasal sprays, which are prescription. The nicotine gum, you chew it just like gum, or you can put it between the cheek and the gums. Uh, nicotine patches, you just put it on your skin and it gives you a, a steady amount over time. Micro tabs, you'd place one under the tongue. Lozenges, you suck on just like a cough drop. Inhalers, you actually inhale just pure nicotine. There's nothing else in there. And nasal spray, again, just pure nicotine. Here I've included some resources that anyone can use if they're looking for education, research, if they're looking to quit. Uh, teensmokefree.gov, they give you a lot of free resources to like other places and they provide a lot of teaching truthinitiative.org actually perform their own research and they have their own programs and tools if you're looking to quit. There's an app called Quit Start that Smoke Free made. It's a free app to help you quit any addiction that has uh, inspiration, tips, and challenges to help you along. And becomeanx.org is another website that includes tool tools for quitting and social support if you're looking to talk to anyone. So in conclusion, vaping is when you use a battery operated electronic device that vaporizes a liquid, which you inhale. There are many different types of vapes and mods that you can see. The biggest difference between vapes and other smoking methods is control of nicotine and how much research that there is. Um, there is an increasing number of adolescents who use vapes, which is why it's a concern because nicotine and the aerosols that you inhale do have a negative effect on your body, which then again increases your risk of getting COVID. And there are plenty of nicotine alternatives for if you're trying to look to quit or to at least just have a cleaner, safer um, version of nicotine. And there are plenty of free resources out there for people if they're looking for information and if they want to quit their nicotine addiction. And here are my references. Um, thanks for watching. Um.